Hello everyone, welcome to Planning the Ultimate Event webinar here with the Fall Training Conference Committee. I want to say thank you guys for being here and we're going to get, we're going to get this webinar started. Um, just basic um, rules and stuff, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask them in your question box that you'll see on your screen. Um, we will be answering all questions at the end, but you guys can feel free to write any questions that you have throughout this webinar and we will make sure to answer them. Um, so yeah, we will have a couple um, presenters, so this is, okay, um, here we go. So that's me, I'm the FTC chair, and that's Kay Kim, she's going to be presenting too, along with our other presenters, which um, we have Angela, and unfortunately Chris won't be able to present today, but Angela will. Okay, uh, and then we also have some of the other hosts that um, are in charge that you guys can ask questions to, Tina, Kevin, Kat, Grace, Kevin, Krista, which are all members of the FTC committee. We have Jen, Steven, Crystal, Lucas, Mimi, and Michael. So basically, um, okay, so what does event planning include? Well, basically event planning is just organizing any type of event. Um, which we have a lot of examples about what they are. So we have, it could be a service project, a fundraiser, a social, a convention, a party, a concert, a fashion show, um, a trip to the park, anything. Anything that you guys make will be an event. Um, so, but one thing that you guys will always remember, that you should remember, is that event planning is more than just planning the event. Um, there's a lot of aspects in event planning is just not all um, just making the event. You also have a lot of other factors that you include which we will bring to your attention um, during this webinar. But some of the things that we'll be talking about is um, for you guys to think about is establishing a budget, um, a date for your event, um, selecting a location, and we'll talk about other aspects and how to prepare for that in the future. So the next part is um, why is event planning fun and rewarding? And Angela will be talking to you about that. All right, hi everyone. So um, why is event planning fun and rewarding? So people think it's boring, but like personally, I want to do it as a career. I've considered it as a career since it's always nice to put on a show or a party or an event for people and know that the reason this was all possible was because of you. They're happy because you made them happy, which makes you happy. So um, you get to make event planning on your like your own thing, right? So there's like no rules, no format, no guidelines. But it's not rocket science. You can make it fit any theme and have it run any way you like. There really isn't a limit to it. And it's always fun doing behind the scene work and seeing the product of your work. Um, you run the event the way you want it to run. So like say if something happens, like if you mess up, because like with event planning, even though you're the host, you need to be prepared for technical errors and other factors that you might not be able to control. And you would have to like improvise on the spot since this is your event and you can run it any way you like. And sometimes people won't even notice that you messed up or that wasn't supposed to happen because you improvise from it. An example would be like if you have a performance group that didn't show up and you're putting on a carnival or festival for a local elementary school. And you could improvise by like maybe asking some of your volunteers, like Circle K members, you know, I'm pretty sure with all of our, you know, members, there's going to be some talent out there. If like he or she could do like a group performance with someone and entertain the kids to like, you know, as a little improvising uh, performance. So like in the end, you have the final say on how things will turn out. That's having the ultimate power to make your event successful. And you know, it's always fun to work with other people in the group committee and just the epicness of the product of your hard work, which makes event planning a rewarding experience. Thank you. Okay, and like we mentioned before, um, there are some uh, main things that you guys should think about when planning an event, and these are some of the things that we would like to highlight for you. Um, their location, picking a good location for your event, the date, um, a theme, if that applies, as well as decorations, marketing, publicizing, um, food and drinks, budget, and cost. So we're going to go into um, location, date, theme decorations, and marketing for this webinar. 
Okay, why is location important? So basically, this lo uh, having a location for your event can determine its success. Um, some of the questions that are always good for you to think about is how far is the event going to be? How are people going to um, get to your event? And how many people are you expecting to go? Um, these are all these questions will be determined on what type of event it is. For example, if it's first um, um, a fundraiser, where if it, if you have your fundraiser twenty minutes away from your campus, how um, how are you going to convince your campus community to be able to attend your event? Um, are you going to have if you're if you decide to have your location in um, in a major city like San Francisco, how are people going to find parking? Or how are people going to get there? Um, how are people from Southern California, if you invite them, how are they going to get there? Um, so they're all different things um, when applying, when when deciding what you're going to do your location. Um, also, sometimes the location is already determined, and it's always about how you work around that. Um, also, think about venue size. If you're going to have if you're planning a really, for example, a large-scale service project that you plan to have 100 of your members attend, if your location that you choose or, um, only can handle 25 people, that might not be a good location to be or make sure um, have a secondary location. It's always good to think about all of the things um, planning ahead. Sometimes the closest location to you or maybe the um, most easily accessible location to you might not be the best location for your event. So um, having the real, a perfect location is really important for you to start thinking about where you want to go in the plan. Okay, the next thing is when should my event be? So um, a date is also another thing to keep in mind. Um, some questions that you should ask yourself is what time will work for people? Not necessarily what time will work best for myself and for the rest of the people on your board or um, on your organizing committee, but what time would be well, majority of the people will be able to attend. Um, for example, there might be um, a for example there might be a um, event that's really that people are like on Wednesday. Let's make it on a Wednesday, Wednesday night. Um, but then we realize a lot of people maybe they have class at that time or they work. So, for example, Wednesday night might not be the best time for your club, per se. So, um, it's always um, good to look at the demographic of what, what your club or, you know, community that you're targeting, um, what time would be best for them. Which, most of the time, it's weekend, um, is a really good time for people. So, some of the things that are already determined is that some service projects, maybe if they're weekly or continuous, already have a set date and time. Um, these are always good. To if if something is working, don't try to fix it. So if you have a lot of good turnout to your weekly um, canned um, packing event, then don't try to change the date unless the organizers really want you to change it. Um, because people already know that it's established. Like okay, I always have to on Saturdays at 10 a.m. We always have um, pa um, food packing. So that's something that really works for people's schedule to keep in mind. Um, so that's always good. Consistency, people really like that too, if it's a continuous project. Another thing, especially if you're planning a really large event, please try to avoid midterm season and final exam season, as well as holidays. Um, those are not the best times to, to plan an event because a lot of people right before midterms and finals will be thinking about midterms and finals. So if you want your event to be really successful, plan after that or a time where you know uh, most people won't have heavy um, workload. Yes, midterm season is all semester long or quarter, um, but try to accommodate people's get as many people, like you know, a majority of the people don't have midterms, so let's try to do it on that day. Another thing, if you want to have invite other people, um, other Circle K clubs around the district, make sure to look in other people's schedules. Um, for example, a perfect example is during right now, um, um, like for example, like um, UC Berkeley hasn't started school yet. They have, they still have a few more, like two more weeks until their school starts. So that's why a lot of schools, for example, UCR is having their K Rock um, next Friday, which they can invite schools like Berkeley and schools on the semester system, like Cal State Fullerton, for example, who haven't started school yet. 
which it's easier for them to get to there. So it's really good to strategize and see when are our other fellow schools free as well as my school. So then you can ask them to come to their event as well. Okay, theme and decoration. So this is something that it only applies to certain types of events. For example, FCC had a theme, Masquerade Ball has a theme, um, and other things like STC, um, Spring Training Conferences have themes. Um, so basically a theme, when um, appropriate, can make or break your event. Basically a theme is really, um, are used to make people more excited about the event, have something like, you know, it could be emotional attachment or just something that they really like can make the event more exciting for people. Um, when you're deciding about a theme, it's really important to think what would the majority majority of the people would like. Um, for example, if I'm having some sort of dance and I really am obsessed with Candyland and, like, I really think that Candyland would be, like, an awesome theme, you know, like, I want to make it just like Katy Perry's music video, California Girls, Candyland. But majority of the people in our club are like, oh, I don't like candy. I don't like eating candy. I really don't like that concept. Then maybe just because you like that theme doesn't mean other people. So it's always good to ask your committee members or other people in the club about what they would like. Because you, what the, the point of having a theme is you want to choose something a lot of people will like so then they feel more excited. Themes are supposed to enhance your event, not... Um, be a deterrent for people why they don't want to come. So um, if you oh, a really important rule I always feel like when doing a theme is if you can't execute the theme properly, don't do it. Um, people sometimes get overly ambitious and they decide to do a really crazy popular theme. For example, I'm just going to throw it like, for example, like Harry Potter. Um, and sometimes people, Harry Potter has such a, la a large fan base that if Harry Potter is not executed correctly, people can be really critical of the decorations as well as the theme um, implementation in general. So remember that if you can't make the theme, if you can't live up to people's expectations, maybe choose a different theme or not, no theme at all. Because you don't want people to be end up going to your dance or going to your event and be like, that was, they're talking about how bad the theme was, not in general about how it is. So always think about um, what would the audience like, what you try to cater for them so they would be more encouraged to attend your event. The same thing with decorations. Decorations should enhance the enhancements. Um, it's always good if you're going to go big, um, have like a decorations chair or really have people looking into that. Um, you know, you always want people to be creative and push the envelope, yet look nice. It's all about aesthetically pleasing so people can um, feel like they're in a, a different place, and that would be good. Okay, the next thing, which is one of the most important things, is publicity and marketing. So um, a, sexual, a successful event is really based on advertising. The more you advertise, the more you let the word out, the better your event will be. The more higher turnout, um, if it's a fundraiser, maybe more participants equal more funds for your organization, service event, more service hours, um, and for social, more people for more people to interact with one another. You know, if you make a big deal about your event, it will become a big deal. So always remember that. Um, you don't want to just make the advert like a lot of advertising. You want to make good quality advertising. It's all about spreading the word out, which um, different place that you will do is the three key places that I like to say, even though online and social media are one and the same, is also in person. So have announcements. Do announcements at general meetings, at committee, committee meetings if you guys have those, at um, DCMs, additional council meetings if you have those. Um, talk to your lieutenant governor and please have them advertise it if it's appropriate. Um, talk to the district board even if it's um, approved by all divisions to attend, then that more than welcome to advertise in that way. As well as we also have the PR Marketing co District Committee, which they can definitely help you in that as well. Um, but that is something that's super important um, to have. If no one knows your event's happening, how do you expect people to attend? They won't attend. So make sure to have that available. Facebook, we can love it and hate it, but Facebook ultimately is a really good way to have your event um, be, be publicized. Having a successful event, um, Facebook event, 
page is really important. Um, have someone be specifically in charge of the Facebook page, um, be regulating, be adding things um, and to keep people who are in question. Don't spam the page either. People don't like that. As well as send emails, send reminders um, for people. And then one of the most important things is that make your advertising different. Make it stand out. Have an eye-catching campaign. For example, I use the picture of Sean, the Metro LTG, in the Pillow Fight um, ad because um, UCLA has done a really good job incorporating an eye-catching campaign where they're making um, provocative photos holding pillows. Um, that is really working as a successful marketing campaign for their event because a lot of people are talking about it from all over the district um, and wanting to submit pictures as well as like getting really involved in that. So, um, you know, having your publicity, making it different, making it unique will really um, put your event on the map and that's what you want. You want people to come. You want people to, you want your event to be successful no matter what kind, no matter what type of event it is. Okay, and we're now going to go into the different types of events that um, we usually plan as Circle Cares, which is a service event, a fundraising event, and a social event. So we're going to go, um, Angela is going to talk about the service event, Kay is going to talk about fundraising, as well I will talk about socials. So um, remember, if at any time you guys have any questions, feel free to write in the question box. We will be answering questions at the end. So. All right, hi everyone. I'm Angela, and I'm from UC Berkeley's uh, I'm UC Berkeley Single Service Chair. So yay! Planning service events are fun. Um, always remember to send out an, a, an email a few days before the event to see who would like to attend. And after members reply, send out an official list like to confirm the attendees, so that way like the members know if they're going or not. And in the email, make sure there's your contact info, assuming like you're the chair of the event, the time and place to meet, and what to bring. Depending on each like project, there are certain things to wear, you know, like a dress code or like, you know, envir environmental projects, you want to wear like long pants. Um, so when you're working with other organizations, it's crucial that you are always in close contact with them in case anything happens last minute. For example, it would be like if you're doing an environmental project and it's raining on the day of, you need to make sure to contact them ASAP so you know like whether or not if they're canceling the event, so you can contact your members as soon as possible so like you know you don't want them to show up to like the event and have them like be turned down. Um, it's also very important to know like your transportation for the event. So if it's walking or driving, uh, make sure you have drivers and if you're going to take the bus, know your bus route and like their times. Um, on the day of the event, make sure you have like each member's contact information so in case they're running late or they're no longer showing up or like you know, they forget to wake up, you can like call them on time and see if they're still up for the event. And of course, while at the event, make sure your members all have a job to do. It really stinks when, you know, people are there to help out and they don't have a job to do. And if it's a low intensity job, try and keep your volunteers entertained, you know, talk to them, ask them how their life's doing. So yeah, that's how you plan a service event. <laughs> Thank you. Hey guys, um, I know it says that Angela's talking, but this is Kay. Um, I'm from UC Berkeley Circle K as well. And as fundraising chair, um, I've done lots of events this year, including like food sales. Um, I've done a game night, you know, like mixed drink sales. And all these things have something in common, and it's that they can make money. Um, doesn't matter like what kind of event it is, how long it is, um, as long as it's making money, you can definitely make it a fundraiser. Um, so one important thing is to always have a cause for your fundraising event. Um, in Circle K, we, we're fortunate to have um, our district fundraising initiatives, um, and so these event or these charities are definitely reasons to um, hold, you know, big fundraisers. Um, uh, as Angela said before, always send out re like reminders about the event to your volunteers, to attendees, um, just so they uh, know that they're ha that it's happening. Um, also, always have enough people working at your event and always have enough supplies at the event. 
um, the last thing you want to do is, you know, scramble around to find people to help you or, you know, to have, like, things to sell. Um, like, you don't want that kind of stress on you, so just make sure you plan ahead and have everything you need. Um, also, be prepared for some curveballs. Have a backup plan. If things don't work out, if it's rain, when you want to sell food outside, or if, you know, people don't show up, then it, just have something to do. Um, make sure you have a safe and secure way of keeping the money. This is very, very important because you're handling a lot of cash, probably. Um, so, I mean, it's always best to have some sort of cash box or, you know, have someone in charge of, like, carrying the money around, making sure that no one tries to mob you or anything. Um, and, and something that a lot of people tend to forget is bringing change with you, especially for something like food sales. Um, because if someone, if the first person that comes up to you like has a twenty dollar bill and wants to buy like a dollar cupcake, then that's not going to work out. So make sure you bring change with you to the event. Um, and also, like all the things that Ruben and Angela said before, apply to this. So you know, location, um, time, marketing, all those things are very important. Um, and yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, and having planning out a social. So just the same thing, remember reminding, um, also have you know, a transportation that you're going to do. But um, one of the things that you want to do when you're planning a social is that make sure you plan a time um, that most people can go to the social. Um, try to accommodate a lot of people, like as many people as you can, because sometimes um, a lot of people want to go to your social, but not everyone can go. So try to incorporate as, lot of, as many people as you can. Um, probably the most important thing when you're planning a social is to plan something that people actually want to go to. Um, sometimes people um, plan socials that involve um, maybe um, going to a movie that um, people, most people in the club already have seen or didn't want, doesn't want to watch. So then that results in a lot of people not wanting to go to your, the event. So you should not have people like you should talk about what um, what your committee likes to do, like or your um, club likes to do. For example, if your club loves to go like ice skating, then maybe having an ice skating social um, would be something really important. Another thing that I want to really highlight when you're making socials is having a balance between free socials and paid socials. So this is something that sometimes clubs overlook. Sometimes um, clubs think that socials almost always have to be paid socials, like going to a restaurant and eating together, or going laser tagging, um, or something like that, because all of those require money. And sometimes um, that makes some people not want to go to the event, because it's like, I have to, um, I have to pay to go to the event. So um, sometimes people want to save money or don't really want to be spending um, a lot of money. So try to have um, different events that are free. For example, um, if everyone gets together and wants to go like up the park and play basketball and people already have basketballs, then that could be a free social that you could do, like having a little basketball tournament at the park. Um, or just hanging out um, with one another. Always try to have a balance because sometimes the paid ones like going to the zoo or going um, to an amusement park is fun, and that's what I'll sometimes gets a lot of people. Or, for example, like going to um, Big Bear or going to the mountains. That could be something that a lot of people look forward to. So just a reminder, um, make sure you have um, like a, a good balance between both of those. Another thing that I really want to highlight, which really makes or breaks a, a social, is the people who are in um, running the social, including um, it could be the Spirit and Social Committee, it could be um, a family head, it could be your just a group of friends, or even um, your executive board or your appointed board for Circle K. One of the most important things to always keep in your mind is to please be inclusive. Um, socials should be a time where people go out and interact with one another. Uh, there's always a lot of socials during the first few weeks of Circle K or each quarter or each semester to try to encourage people to join. Always be inclusive. Um, I have participated in a lot of socials 
whether it be my own club or different clubs or different divisions, and sometimes people um, talk to only their friends or specific people they feel comfortable with because that's a natural thing to do. But if you're the person um, planning or if you're part of the planning committee, please try to um, reach out and talk to the new members. Try to um, encourage some of your members to talk to the new people. But socials are about um, having people interact with one another and really be able to participate with each other. And um, that's what you want to do. You want to encourage um, fellowship and really having people be comfortable with one another. So uh, being inclusive on all the terms is something that a lot of people should um, do, especially if you've noticed, oh, yeah, I've been guilty of doing that in the past. Try to um, put that aspect, um, try to see if you could change that aspect and really be inclusive because we really want everyone to feel part of Circle K. And, that's what socials are there for you, and that's what you want to do. So that's something good. So. Okay, so making Circle K or making the event Circle K appropriate. Some of you might, some of you guys might cringe, like looking at this list or observe medical labor. Just all this paperwork, and I, I know it can get kind of annoying. But it's, they're, they're all very, very important. Um, the first two are report forms that um, the club fills out for every event. And these are important because you keep track of who, who came to the event. Um, sorry. Um, like how many hours um, you record for your club. And um, in the case of fundraising, how, many, how much money you raised. Um, and this is important for, you know, your MRF or, you know, awards at the end of the year. So it's just best to be organized as soon as possible. Um, so just like right after the events happen. Um, medical waivers. Most of you have probably filled this out if you've gone to the Circle K event. Um, this is just to make sure that you guys are safe. Um, if something does happen, then there's, you know, a way for you to get treatment or, you know, to get in contact with whoever needs to be contacted. So. Um, just all these paperwork are very important. I know like if you guys get any of this during any event, make sure you fill it out because it's very, very important to Circle K International. Hi, this is Kay. Um, so making the event special. Um, as I talked about earlier, uh, just add a cause to it, especially if it's a fundraiser. Even if it's not a fundraiser, um, like service events, just add a specific cause. Um, we do have a district service initiative that you can work with. Um, so that's really easy and that's, um, that's a great way to get people engaged in the event. Um, do something that will really get people pumped up for the event. Yeah, people go to, have, like, people go to events to have fun, to meet people but they're also there for another reason. Um, this goes back to adding a cause to the event. Um, so, I mean, if people just want to go for the service, then they can, you know, go to any event that interests them. Um, so every event has a cause, purpose, or goal. Uh, cause you mentioned, purpose, goal. I mean, it all links to the same thing. Um, just make sure that people are aware of why they're doing a service event. Um, and how, you know, your hours will affect your target audience or whoever, um, just so, you know, they can really have that personal connection with the event. Um, and this will really get people to, like, come back to both Circle K and to, you know, events that you guys might hold. So um, that's always very important, too.
Okay, so basically we have um, we're kind of, we're done with the webinar with presenting. We'll put we're not done with the webinar. We're done presenting um, for you guys. So if you guys have any questions about any aspect of the event, we have um, we have our emails so that you can contact with us. So you, um, you we'll refer back to this after um, the meeting. So right now we'll have time to answer questions. Um, that you guys have. But before we get to questions, I just want to remind you guys, we have another webinar coming up um, on February 8th at 8 p.m. that will be leading a committee and working as a team. So it will be, um, we'll be teaching you guys about how to be able to run a committee um, as well as how to unify your committee. A unified team is a better team. So um, we'll be helping you guys do that. So our primary host for that will be Kat Ho. So, um, so please be able to go to that. Um, but for now, we have a question if you guys want to ask. Them. Okay, so this question was asked by, from, was asked is, what kind of ideas do you have to increase leadership events within the club? Um, by leadership events, I think um, you also mean like leadership opportunities. Um, I, or, oh, leadership events. Okay, I understand. So basically, um, I know something that our school likes to do is that we have like a leadership um, symposium, 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 and basically, um, it's where um, the officers plan like before like running for office. Um, they like you know they get together um, to plan like this one hour event where basically they get um, people to talk about what their positions are. Um, like fun, like I'm fundraising chair and this is what I do um, and it's like just like informing them about the position as well as like other ways they can get involved in that um, which is always good because it's always good to inform people like what you guys do especially if you're looking for the leaders in the future um, another way to increase leadership within your club is during this event um, you can allow general members which are awesome to chair events themselves um, which is really awesome, um, good to have because, so for example, I, I know we have a chair project program, which basically any member could sign up and be like, I would want to chair this um, um, river cleaning project. And it like gives them an opportunity to be, um, you know, to, to be, to be a per like to run this event and be able to do all those things. I know that Angela has other suggestions. Angela, would you like to answer? Okay, I'll just I'll answer for her. Okay, so other things that you can have offer for um, for other things that you could offer is that, for example, um, having family heads is another way to have leadership programs. Which that is like you may not think that's an event, but that's a program that um, requires a lot of organizing and a lot of planning. So um, that is something that you get together and you decide like how you're going to do it, but basically um, general members can have leadership positions in there. Um, also, the same, similarly, there's mentorship programs where, um, you know, it could be like bigs and littles or like mentors and mentees, and it really gives um, people leadership, you know, it doesn't matter, like, you know, just because they've been in the club, you know, they have a lot of experience and they can be able to show that to it. So, yeah. Of the answer. Does anyone you can have you can write any types of question. You're welcome.
Okay, the next question that we have is, what kind of etiquette should officers have when trying to coordinate an event? This is a really important question. Um, so basically, um, one of the, one of the, a main important way for officers to act is always act professional. You guys are the leaders of your club, your organization, of your school. And it's always really important to um, to be able to be um, you know to you are the representatives of your club to so always be in a professional manner. Um, this includes you know like not saying profanity, actually participating in the event, um, you know like like actually like you know because sometimes people don't have um, you know sometimes they don't like like, you know, sometimes at a service event, we see an, a board officer just sitting there, not really participating in, like, you know, if it's manual labor, they don't want to do it. So, um, you know, it's always good to be, you guys are the role models, you should be the leader. So, um, that's something that should be done. And sometimes it should not, like, you know, sometimes officers are not doing that. Um, also, um, also, um, how I said in the socials, it's always good to be inclusive um, because, you know, we, w we really want people to feel like they're a part of the organization and board members should always act professional, inclusive, friendly, outgoing at all times, um, especially when in contact with other members, just because it gets a little, um, like, a little, like, you know, you always should hold professionalism. You, you don't want to turn people away from the organization. You don't want people to think you're rude or people in your club are rude because that has happened before or um, sometimes lazy too. So remember to always be active. If you're a board member and you don't want to do an event, don't go to it. It's better if you don't go than like not doing work and complaining. You always want to have positive atmosphere and if a problem happens, you help take care of it even if it's not your event. Um, so yeah, so we're going to have Angela and Kay answer the next few questions. Okay, so one of the questions we received is what kind of funding options are there for larger scale events? Um, this is a really good question and I know this is a big concern for a couple of clubs out there, but um, there, you know, there are a lot of, there's, there's money everywhere essentially. Um, you just really have to look in the right places. Uh, one of the best options is grants. Um, I know, a, like, I know UC Berkeley has a grant that you, uh, people can apply to um, in order to fund events such as, you know, our single service event or our large fundraiser. Um, so those really help. I mean, like even even though the application might be intimidating, it'll, it's always smart to apply anyways because you never know uh, what's going to happen. Another option is to um, ask for donations. I know this is also very daunting going up to the businesses um, and following up and all that, but it's always very effective um, if done correctly. and. Um, it's, it does require a bit of work, but it's very, it'll pay off in, in the end. All right, next question we have is, what can you do to organize an event when those who you need to contact are far away? So um, as single service chair at UC Berkeley, I would have to contact different organizations, and I don't have, like, you know, access to, like, go visit, like, drive a car and, like, go visit them. So what I would do is just, like, you know, first email them, but then if they don't reply back to your emails, I guess the best way to like you know contact them is like through phone, so you can talk to them and like get all your questions answered. And it's to me, I feel like it's the most efficient and the quickest way instead of like waiting for like an email to like be like um, sent back to you. So that's like how I would do it. And sorry, next one is next question we have is what advice do you have for first-time event planners? You want to take a cake? Sure. Um, so. I don't know, like going into any position or even like, I don't know, even if like any event you're planning, um, it can be a bit daunting. But um, I think the most important thing is to cover the fundamentals so that one slide that ribbon um, covered, so like location, time, play, or location, time, you know, cause and all that. Um, as long as you have those things covered and solidified, um, everything will go smoothly for sure. Um, and I think the most important thing you can do is just to have fun with your event. 
Um, even if things go, don't go the way you wanted to, even if you don't raise as much money as you planned, um, just have fun and make sure the attendees are having fun as well. And in the end, it'll all be good. Okay, and then we have another question is, are there suggestions for housing venues for events and locations other than your own city? Um, I think housing is something that, you know, is something that is being really important and relevant in Circle K today because now we're actually having events that um, are more large scale and include a lot of the divisions and people really want to go to them. So, um, for, so I know, for example, like K Rock now is offering housing, which I they haven't done in the past. So some of the, I feel like some of the um, different things that you can do with housing is really first of all, okay, if you're the club that wants to go to the event um, and they haven't offered housing, it's always good to email the event contact and be like, is there some sort of housing, um, you know, some sort of housing thing that you know that you can offer for our club. It, um, it's always good. And the other thing is always look, um, this can go for both um, parties, is always look at your options for housing. You know, if you have people who are originally from, like for example, if you're trying to go to Mass Grade, well, if you have people who are originally from San Diego, maybe try to see if you're able to stay housing over there, even though San Diego has a lot of housing. But that's just an, an, um, um, an example. Also ask for your Kiwan, ask your Kiwanians for maybe they know some they have housing to provide or maybe they can help fundraise for you guys to get housing for um, the event um, it's something like super important now because I, I know we didn't have that before and it's always something really um, you know really sticky about it but um, yeah it's always really important to have that to think about it um, does anyone have any questions Any final questions? Okay, seeing that there's none. Um, I just want to say thank you guys for all um, attending our webinar. We've been... Oh, okay. Oh, I can't lose. Oh, you want to add? It's okay. Well, I'm... Okay, so there's apparently there's one more question. And it's, um, what about opposing... Oh, wait, Kay, I think Kay should answer this event, a question. It's about, what about approaching businesses, sponsors, to help your event? You okay, um, I'll answer this. Um, as I mentioned before, donations are a great way to help fund your event. Um, I know this is daunting, as I said before. Um, but the best thing you can do is, if it is local, um, then go actually go into the business and ask for their manager. And speak to their manager directly about, um, you know, your event and what your cause is. Um, and that will really get them to, like, understand what you're doing and maybe, you know, help you out. Um, another very important thing is to have a donation letter. This is, this should basically outline, you know, like, again, what your cause is, what your event is, um, where the money is going to, or, you know, if it is a fundraiser or, um, you know, who you're helping. And again, this will really help um, the sponsors see why they should help you out. And if, I mean, obviously Circle K does many things, good things, so we have great causes. Um, so once they see these, once they see what we're doing and what uh, difference we're making, then um, it'll really get them to um, help, like, help you out, even in the small state. And yeah. Okay, thank you, Kay. Um, so basically, I just want to um, remind you guys, um, the recorded webinar, as well as the PowerPoint presentation, will be available to, for, to be downloaded at um, cnhk.org. It will be on the JCloud, which is our um, newly and improved resources page that was created by our um, tech editor, um, Trung, from Casey Fullerton, who is also um, helping us put on these amazing webinars, so thanks to him a lot. Um, and just a quick reminder, we will have another webinar um, basically a month from now, and it'll, on February 8th, it will be about leading a committee and working as a team. 
will be hosted by the FTC community, organized by our, um, the beautiful Cat Ho. So please make sure um, to come out and have questions and be ready to learn about how to lead an awesome committee. And I just want to say thank you guys all. If you, for any if you guys have any um, following questions, um, remember you guys can always um, contact us. Oops. At our emails will be on the screen again. But um, if anything, you can always contact me on Facebook, or if not, FTC at cnacirclek.org. And thank you guys for being here, and I'll see you all um, February 8th, hopefully. Bye-bye. The organizer has ended the session.